In the busy world of politics, sometimes one country's actions can affect many others, where the actions of one nation reverberate, producing effects that touch other corners of the world. Like when you drop a stone in water, the ripples spread out. The recent event in Russia, particularly the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin, a once Kremlin-aligned figure, is one such moment. But how did we get here? And more pointedly, to what extent does the West, specifically the U.S., find itself accountable for this moment? Consider the plane crash. The world watched with bated breath as a plume of white smoke billowed into the sky, marking the probable end of a man who had been, just months prior, dubbed Putin's enemy number one. Why? Because he dared to question, to challenge. A former ally of the Kremlin, his voice had grown discordant in recent months, criticizing Russia's involvement in the Ukraine war. A once celebrated figure had now become a thorn in Putin's side. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Please subscribe, like and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. Now, let's begin. But is it just Russia's internal politics that caused this downfall? The U.S.'s stance on Russia's involvement in Ukraine has been clear even vehement at times. President Biden himself remarked, I don't know for a fact what happened, but I'm not surprised. Such a statement might be perceived as a nod to the alleged involvement of the West in stirring up discord within Russia. Let's ask ourselves. Did the West play a part in pushing Prigozhin to his limits, making him voice out against Russia's top military command, leading to his eventual alienation and perhaps even his death? Can we turn a blind eye to U.S. and NATO interference in global politics? Recall the political scientist John Mearsheimer, who for years warned that the U.S.'s endeavor to expand NATO and foster amicable relations with Ukraine would pave the path to war. And now, as we find ourselves amidst another geopolitical crisis, can we ignore U.S. and NATO part in laying its groundwork? I ask you this. If the U.S. and NATO really consider themselves champions of peace, should they not acknowledge their own role in the global stage? Marsheimer pointed out the real beginning of NATO current predicament, the 2008 NATO summit in Bucharest. The tension was clear. Align Ukraine and Georgia with NATO, drawing a clear line between the West and Russia. But what if? Just what if? S and NATO had approached this differently. What if Ukraine? on its own volition, yearned to be a pro-American liberal democracy. Would Russia still view it as an existential threat? Perhaps. But the real issue here lies in U.S. intent to expand both NATO and the EU, making Ukraine a staunch ally against Russia. The intricate web of global politics is one where every action, every statement, and every alliance has consequences. As we lament the tragic fate of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the violent Wagner mercenary group, who in June led his fighters on an aborted mutinous march to Moscow. We must also introspect on our own roles and the choices we make on the world stage. The question remains, can we truly say that US and NATO played no part in this? Or is it time for the West to recognize its role in the complex tapestry of geopolitics? Meddling in other countries' war that eventually caused more issues on the world stage. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video and comment turning Ukraine into a pro-American liberal democracy. All three of these combined are what the Russians see as a direct threat. Now you might wonder, but why is Russia's perspective so relevant? Let me answer that. Because understanding the dynamics that have driven this situation is critical. Ukraine geographically and historically has been at the crossroads of East and West. Let me repeat this statement the second time because it's very important. But why is Russia's perspective so relevant? Let me answer that because understanding the dynamics that have driven this situation is critical. Ukraine geographically and historically has been at the crossroads of East and West, and every nation, including Russia and the U.S., has its own sphere of influence, a domain where they feel their security is deeply entrenched. For Russia, Ukraine lies within that domain, just like Mexico or Cuba to the United States of America. The United States, from its inception, has abided by the Monroe Doctrine, which essentially warned European nations against meddling in the affairs of the Western Hemisphere. America considered any intervention by European powers in the Western Hemisphere as a potential threat. Similarly, Russia sees NATO expansion towards its borders, particularly in Ukraine, as a direct infringement on its sphere of influence. But here's the thing. Ukraine is not just a chess piece on the global board. It's a sovereign nation with its own aspirations. The question is, 
Does Ukraine not have the right to choose its own alliances? Does it not have the right to align itself more with the West if it sees fit? The West, and particularly the U.S., has to shoulder some blame for the current crisis. Not because Ukraine wishes to join NATO or the EU or even become a liberal democracy, but because, historically, Western powers have not been good listeners. When Russia voiced its concerns over NATO expansion, they were dismissed. When Russia reiterated its strategic interests, they were overlooked. Such dismissals, regardless of their validity, have consequences. President Biden's remarks about pre joshans death reflect a larger issue of international politics. Nations acting based on self-interest without fully considering the consequences of their actions. This is not unique to the U.S. or the West. It's a common trend in the annals of history. In an interconnected world, nations must be more receptive to the concerns and perspectives of others. This doesn't mean bowing to every demand or concern, but understanding them and finding a middle ground. The unfortunate incident involving Prigozhin underscores the importance of nations working together, listening to each other, and ensuring that conflicts are resolved through dialogue rather than escalation will fall of Prigozhin's plane. The tensions between East and West and the larger narrative surrounding Ukraine is a testament to the complexities of international relations. It's a stark reminder that in this intricate dance of geopolitics, every step, every misstep reverberates globally. As we reflect on these events, let's not just point fingers. Instead, let's ask ourselves, how can nations prioritize diplomacy over confrontation? How can we ensure that the voices and aspirations of nations like Ukraine are respected while also recognizing the legitimate concerns of their neighbors? The world watches and waits for answers, and it is our collective responsibility to provide them. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content. So please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now and I will see you on the other side.